360 cameras are very popular now, and it is interesting to see how the buzz around 360 imagery is growing at the moment. Although this is not a new topic, and over the years we have seen all kind of camera setups from various parties. Still, some well-known manufacturers have clearly seen the potential and are now trying their wings with 360 photography. Especially this year 2025 has been very active in this area. Very recently we show how DJI, which is well known from their excellent drones and other camera equipments, released their own Osmo 360 camera. And just a couple weeks later this new cool anti-gravity A1 drone came out. And it seems like a very interesting 360 solution for capturing aerial footages. That particular drone, by the way, would be an excellent system for 3D scanning areas and creating 3D models. And I hope I will have the chance to try it out someday and explore how Gaussian splatting models could be created with it. But first of all, before we can go that far, I want us to focus on the type of video files that these cameras produce and show what they are actually made of. Hello everyone, it's Olli here again. This time I thought I'd make this video about 360 footages and especially Insta360 video files and show some hacks and ways you can quickly view and browse the footage you have shot. If you have been following my channel, you will know that I use 360 cameras for 3D scanning and processing 360 images so that they can be used as a radiance field material. During this research I have learned to understand different file types and now I want to show you a few practical tricks how these files work. If you have used an Insta360 cameras and shot 360 videos with it, you have probably noticed that when you transfer files from the camera's memory card to your computer, the camera system produce very special file formats. In earlier models like the X3 or for example this RS1 1-inch model, the camera produced three separate files for each video. And those were these .insv files, where that last V letter stands for the video. And likewise, if you took a still images with the camera, the file type is this .insp, where this P letter stands naturally for the photo. But what are these special video files actually, and why they are named like that? I can reveal that they are actually just regular video files, and we can easily verify this just by renaming the files. For example, if I select this video file that starts with the LRV letters and change its extension to MP4, and when we accept the change, we notice that its icon changed to indicate that we can now open it in our default video player. And it is just that simple. We can double click the file open and it runs like any other MP4 file. You don't need any separate conversion apps to see what's inside these files. The simple renaming procedure works just fine. And when we look at this, we can already guess what that prefix name meant. It shows this very interesting looking footage where the raw images from the 360 camera is combined together and the video is very low resolution. So this is actually only a preview file which is meant for the Insta360 Studio program. And that's why the LR view stands for the low resolution video. The actual high resolution files are in these other two files and they are a separate videos from each lens of the 360 camera. And the, these are the so-called raw footages. This is the source format 
how the video is captured and saved from the camera sensor. This material is not very usable in its current form. As we can see, the image is upside down and it is very distorted because it is captured through the fisheye lens of the 360 camera. And when we look closer, we can see that the image is bordered by the sharp line here on all edges. And that is exactly the stitching scheme that cuts off part of the image and, for example, loses the selfie stick from the final result. When we do the same trick for the photo file and rename it, it with the very familiar image type .jpg, we can open it in our system's default image viewer and see better how the raw images are combined together side by side. And from here we can have a better understanding what these 360 images have eaten originally. One significant change has occurred in Insta360 video files when we move to the latest camera models like X4 or the latest X5 cameras. These new cameras no longer produce anything but the low resolution file and only one file for the raw footage. When we use the same trick and rename the file to MP4 format and when we double click it open we can see the image from only one lens. So where is the image from the other lens then? This new file type smartly utilizes video tracks that can be used within a single video file. So if we use special kind of video players, which in my case is this lightweight MPC-HC, we can find video tracks from its settings. And from there we can choose that other lens. So in these new video types it is more practical when information from both lenses is included within a single video file. The same trick, by the way, can be done also with the popular VLC media player. If you want to try it, it is possible to open multiple video tracks from there as well. But instead that we now want to start renaming these 360 files just for the browsing purposes, we luckily don't have to do that. I don't know if you have noticed this new thing, but in the latest update for the Insta360 Studio 5.7 or above, they have now included a brand new Quick Look feature in the installation and it works on the system level. So every time you start to go through your 360 footages, you can now just very simply select the file and press the space bar from the keyboard. The quick look feature will immediately open the footage into this small pop-up window, where you can right away start to rotate the view and experience the 360 footage as it meant to. This is very cool and long-awaited feature and it makes it much more easier to open these files and quickly peek inside them without opening them into the main studio program first. Hitting spacebar opens the quick look window and second hit closes it. And when you have a lot of these 360 files in your folder, another neat trick is to use arrow keys when you fastly want to go through them. When your quick look window is open, activate your file browser window and start press arrow keys up or down. This way you can very effectively go to the next file and very very fast glance through your footage library. The quick look function is originally from Mac OS, where it has been around for a quite long time now, so Mac users are very familiar with it. But now it is also usable in Windows systems, for at least in these Insta360 files. I highly recommend to test this spacebar trick. Okay, I hope these features that I introduced were helpful to you. 
and I hope that it at least expanded your understanding of what 360 images are like in RAW format and how much they are actually edited before they can be opened in this basic equi-rectangular format. By the way, if you find these tips and tutorial videos of mine valuable, I want to mention that I have now enabled this super thanks feature on my YouTube channel. That way you can show your support for my research and help me publish more videos like this in the future. On the other hand, if you are interested in these of my programs and digital products that I have collected in my Gumroad online store, for example, there is now also a virtual camera bundle where I have combined my popular camera array tool and the latest 360 extractor tool. By purchasing these products, you are not only getting these smart softwares, you are also supporting my channel. I am very grateful for all the help. Now I will continue my work with the 360 images and explore more new angles. Thanks for watching. Kitos. You got me shaking, yeah, I feel the fever come.